I'm Sarah Scott, and welcome to LUTV Sports Break, where we will discuss interesting topics with our panel of sports reporters. LUTV Sports Break is back like Jordan, wearing the 4-5. Speaking of Michael Jordan, the first two hours of a 10-hour miniseries titled The Last Dance on the Chicago Bulls 97-98 championship run was recently released. In a CBS Sports Dot com article, Jordan feels after seeing the documentary, people will feel he is a horrible guy. Panel, what are your thoughts on Jordan in The Last Dance? If people, I wouldn't say Michael Jordan shouldn't, should feel that way, maybe, but as an audience, we should know everything wasn't peaches and cream about him. He was the best player in the world. What does he have to be nice about? He was that guy. It wasn't no reason for him to be nice, pat on the back. We all knew Kobe was that guy. We all knew Kobe was that guy, and Kobe wasn't ashamed of it. And I guess Michael was saying he probably was 10 times worse than what Kobe was. So far in the first two episodes, though, it hasn't shown that he is a bad guy. It's kind of make you feel like, okay, everything Jordan has done, he's actually worked for it. He When he came in the league, he wasn't expected to be that big. Uh, nobody really knew anything about him, but he knew himself that he could he could be that guy. So, I mean, so far, it hasn't showed that he's a horrible person, but it just shows that Michael Jordan so far is that guy. Yeah, I think that was going to be my first thought is we were going to see Michael Jordan like, yelling and screaming at all of his uh, teammates, and I didn't really get to see that. Uh, I mean, you saw it a little bit, but it wasn't to the extent of like – someone's going to be yelling and screaming at you all the time. Like, it just looked like a teammate taking charge of his team. I pretty much proposed the question of why does he feel that the documentary will make him look like a bad person? Within these first two episodes, pretty much like you guys said, we didn't see a lot of anger. We didn't see anything violent from Michael that would make him seem like a bad person. We saw an intense competitor that wanted to win that wanted to push his teammates. So what what is there possibly in there in these next few episodes that we're going to see that's going to make him seem like a horrible person? I'm kind Yeah, of see, that's out. that's kind of where I'm at right now, too. I didn't see anything too crazy. I've We've all heard stories of how MJ treated his teammates and how he was hard on them. Same things that we've heard about Kobe and even some about LeBron, too. And I like I said, like you guys said, in the first two episodes, we didn't really see anything too crazy like that. I think it's mostly just the fact that it's, you know, he's not in that environment anymore. He's not in, like, win win game mode anymore. And so he might see the things that he did a little bit differently because, you know, we've all played sports and we know how, all know how different it can be in the game than, you know, on the other side of it. So I think that he just kind of views it a little bit differently. But I honestly don't think – like I said, I don't know what's going to happen in the next eight episodes, but I really just don't think that we're ever going to really get to a point – to where we view him as a horrible person just because of his competitive nature. And to back up that question a little bit, now that I'm kind of thinking about it, I think what he means is in a time like this where everybody is so sensitive to anything you pretty much say, if you look as you were watching and you look at him talking in his presence, so he still pretty much is, you can tell he's not nice at all. Like he's going to give it to you the way it is. He's not going to, sugarcoated even how scotty was uh with the ankle injury and he, he he didn't get the surgery till the season to prove a point to jerry he was like scotty was selfish and he still was saying that so i'm sure it was little things people were doing in practice that wasn't championship material or the championship way and that he told them and he didn't care how anybody felt because he wanted to win even when he was a rookie and he they were playing against the milwaukee books and he was just like, everybody was pretty much like, oh, okay, we're done pretty much. And he said, no, we're not. Like, he was a rookie saying that, like, he, I'm pretty sure as he got older and he knew, I mean, it was, as he got pretty much ahead of everybody in the NBA, I'm sure he got meaner with those words because it was like, either you're going to play or you're not, are you really not going to rock with me? I'm going to take over. And like, just like even when the last season when Scotty was out and he uh pretty – I don't forgot what team that w- was going against, and he pretty much put up 49. They barely got the win, but it's just the guy he was. He, he didn't really care. He was going to try to do his best to win. So I don't feel like this bad at all. See, I think if you watch basketball back then, that's how it was. Everybody was tough. Everybody was like uh, 
I mean, we saw people dunking to be the 122nd most uh, paid salary is just unbelievable for literally the second best man at the time. Yeah, that was one of the things that I wanted to ask you guys about. Um, that was honestly like one of my my favorite parts of the story so far is the Scotty Pippen come up. And I thought at the beginning of this of this uh, documentary, I thought it was going to be way more Michael Jordan based. How did you guys feel about this contract and the things that Scotty went through and the way that he was almost treated by Michael Jordan and other teammates that he had? Um, I felt like Scotty is dealing with a lot of adversity that players are dealing with today. And we've seen at that time, the owners were still operating as they do today. Now we have better CBA deals for players to earn the money they deserve. But Scottie Pippen was way undersold. And I feel like that's a part of Michael that he's still internally dealing with. On the outside, he can say that he still feels Scottie was selfish today. But a part of me wonders if that is why Michael feels it will make him look like a horrible person. Scottie, Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan were looked at as Batman and Robin. So how could you say you deeply care about someone like that, not just as a teammate, as a friend, and you knew what they were going through and you allowed them to be just so undervalued? And in my honest opinion, we looked at cases today where LeBron got Tristan Thompson over $60 million and J.R. Smith over $45 million. If Michael truly cared about Scotty at that time, I honestly felt like he could have sat down with management and say, this guy has always been there for me. He is the reason why we're getting to these championships. I need to help you have to pay him more money. And I just felt like he didn't go out and do that. He had a chance too. This Whatever. documentary is going to be interesting because Jerry Cruz, I I don't know if Michael actually did, but Jerry Cruz was such a, a person that was like, I made the team. I can do it without you yeah. guys. I'm just find more Michael Jordan than Scottie Pimpins. It wasn't no way he was going to find anybody like those two guys. Those two guys was grinding. And I feel like in a way, Michael probably did say something. And even at the end of the episode, too, it really started getting interesting. I hate that they just stopped it right there. And we got to wait a whole another week because it's just like, Scotty was cussing him out on the bus. Like, hey, I don't care. Trade me. Get me out of here. And it's just like, we don't know what Jerry Cruz, I feel like we're going to find out more about Jerry Cruz and what he did. But I just think Jerry Cruz was a lot of what made attention. So between everybody, he was the 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 DNA and of the tension in that, in that team or organization. Yeah, I definitely think Jerry Cross's like point on you need uh, management as well as the team and the player, the players and the coaches. I like, I get it. But also if you, if that Bulls team didn't have the Michael Jordans, the Scottie Pippins, the Dennis Rodmans, and even Phil Jackson, it would not have been the same. Management can't just build a team without those iconic players. And that's the thing I think I really was like, should Jordan have been like out of the blue, kept nagging on uh, Jerry Krause? No, maybe not. But like, I completely get where his frustration was coming from because uh, I I agree. I mean, the little man syndrome definitely showed because uh, Krause wasn't giving recognition to the team. I mean, the whole, you could win 82 games in a row, but this is still your last year with the Chicago Bulls. Did you see what Phil Jackson did for your team? I mean, they wouldn't have been the 90s Chicago Bulls without all of those pieces. Yeah. See, I can, I completely agree with that. I am totally against the fact that at the beginning of the season, he was like, yo, this is your last year. I have a problem with the fact that they were coming off a two, like they had won two consecutive championships and they're already talking about how this team's going to lose. For management to media to everyone around them, I feel like that was just handled in a really strange way. Like these people, these, this team just won more games than any other team ever in history. And you're going to tell them that they're on, like they're going to come down. And I, I think that, Michael Jordan really said it best when he said that they had a right to defend what was theirs until they lost it. And I think that that to me was one of the most monumental, monumental moments so far in this documentary, because that's so true. They, they had already counted them out before they even got to their 90, what is it? 97, 96 season, 97 season. And that just, that didn't sit right with me. And I feel like that says a lot about like, how management does affect a game and not even in a positive way and in, in more of a negative life than anything. Especially him. He really got under control with it. You tell yeah. Bill Jackson that if you go 82-0, 82-0. You're not. Like, even, like, what? And the man was grooming another coach while he was still coaching. And it wasn't like Phil Jackson. 
Jackson was losing games, he was winning. Right. Why are you telling this man that? And obviously, he he the the plan backfired on him. He came to came to the Los Angeles Lakers and won what five more championships. Five more. Like you can't be that cocky. It's it's certain organizations that kind of just let their team do what they do. Hey, come to me, talk about it. We'll discuss some things. But this guy was like, "Oh, if you don't want to do it my way, bye." And he wasn't gonna find another Phil Jackson. He wasn't gonna find another Michael Jordan or Scotty. You really can't find another Dennis Rodman. I mean, it was just, it just definitely can't it, find another. He really Dennis made Rodman. me mad. Man. Going back to Jerry <laughs> Cross, I just feel like I hate to say it, but he was the evil within the organization already off the back. We're talking about Phil Jackson, the Zen Master. You cannot tell me that a coach of that personality, that caliber, that can deal with a personality like Michael Jordan a wild child like Dennis Rodman and dealt with the egos of Kobe Bryant and Shaq and made it work was the problem within that organization. It definitely was not Phil and he made a mistake by just ruining it. And how, sure, well, how do you expect players to kind of play under a uh, management that is sitting here? You love this coach so much and they're right here in the stands grooming another coach. Like, you know, this is his last year. They don't want to play under that. I mean, of course they want to wait they're going to want to make Phil's uh, last year absolutely monumental. But, like, how do you th- – that's just putting more pressure on your players. For sure. Yeah. That, that's- well, I know that one thing is for sure that we're all excited to continue the series. You know, we have four more weeks of episodes. So, thank you, panel, and thank you for tuning in to LUTV Sports, where we keep you in the game for every game. For more content from LUTV News, follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.